We're planning to do the Nunakani canoe loop tonight and camp on Nunakani Lake. So it should be good. Weather seems good. So we just finished paddling through Big Hawk Lake and we're now at the portage into Clear Lake. We are going to stop and have a little snack and drink some water and then we're going to walk the portage. Should be a short little portage into the next lake. Uh, I forgot to mention I'm here with my friend Michelle. So she also has a YouTube channel that I'm going to link down below if you want to check her out. She also is probably going to have a video of this trip. finished our little snack and now we are walking the portage that's 225 meters I think it is from Big Hawk Lake to Clear Lake so I'm on my second mode of year because it is a little bit colder this weekend and so I have a bit more gear with me to try and keep warm Michelle's up there with the canoe as you can see it's a nice little trail We just paddled from the, across Clear Lake to the next portage, it only took us 15 minutes. So now we're here to do another portage that's 253 meters. So it should be nice, quick, easy. after probably what would have been an hour's delay following Jeff's maps. Kind of led us in a bit of a wrong direction, but now we finally found it, our way to the portage. Well, actually the portage to the portage. So quick little 60 meters and then we'll be at the portage into Nunakani.
probably tell, we got out of at the first portage and there was a short little portage to another portage sign where it split into two portages. The one to Nunakani goes over across the dam. So we went across the dam there. And then it follows this really strange, not too well-marked trail to where we're assuming might be the other side where we could put in, but we're not entirely sure as there's no other sign on that side. So we're hoping that we don't come across any more rapids once we put in, but we'll have to see. So this is where we've decided to put in our canoe just after this little set of rapids here. There's no signs along the shoreline anywhere to say that this is where the portage might start if you're coming the other way. So we're hoping that we aren't going to run into any more rapids as we go along. We'll just have to see. So if you can see the little yellow portage sign right there, we just put in across the shoreline and as we're now out in the canoe, we can see that the portage sign is now on the opposite side of this little water area, which is strange because there was a sign on the once we crossed the dam on the other side of the shore. What do you think, Michelle? It's so confusing and I'm tired and hungry. <laughs> Hopefully we get to our site pretty soon. So we just made it to our site right back here. Uh, this is going to be our home for the night. We're just going to have a quick bite to eat and then set up our camp for the night. So I wanted to show you guys my sleep setup. So first I have this whitish tarp that is from Canadian Tire. It is Woods brand. Nice big tarp I can put over my sleep system. And then when we get to my hammock underneath. Okay, so this is what my hammock looks like underneath the tarp. So this is the Lawson Blue Ridge hammock and it has its own fly that attaches right to it. It has little velcro pieces that stick to the bottom, loops around the poles, and then it actually clips to underneath on these. Going inside, if we flip up the rain tarp, You can see it has a little bug net and poles to give it some support. So inside I have my Teton camp pillow. And then this is my Teton Fahrenheit sleeping bag. So it has a nice purple liner. Now this sleeping bag is rated to minus 18. Inside the hammock, I have two little pockets to store some gear, and there are little hooks on either end of my hammock to hang things, like my lantern. Underneath my hammock, I have my Lawson underquilt. And then the straps my hammock. This is my water filter I have. So this is the Catadyne Be Free filter with the Hydra Pack 2 liter bag. And then I have my camp chair, which this is a mountain ridge chair that I got from Giant Tiger this year actually. I just have my little towel from doing dishes over it. And then my pack, which is a Woods 80 liter pack, dry bag of course. And then I have a smaller little dry bag down here. And that's my camp setup. So if we 
Let's start looking from side to side because we have two cameras filming this right now. But we thought we should sit down and do a little chat about how we know each other. So, Michelle and I first met each other through Girl Guides and we went pretty much all the way through Girl Guides together. Yeah, so man. many years and we've been Small out of Girl here. Guides for a while now, so it's been a while. Um, Michelle actually was the first person who got me into canoe tripping. We went on our first canoe trip last year in June, I think it was. I think it was somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. So we got gone from there. Yep. We did the Tim River, and since then she's had me hooked on canoe tripping. So how we ended up here now. Yay! <laughs> now I have a friend to go canoe tripping with because we don't have any. I like to go to a lot better than going solo sometimes. And as we go canoe tripping more and more, our stuff continues to grow. What we decide we need for canoe tripping. What we just buy on Amazon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All of the different gadgets and stuff. When we first started out, we had a lot bigger packs with a lot more stuff in them. Now we're slowly condensing a little more. Yep, we're getting closer and closer. We just started hammock camping, both of us, um, last fall. Yeah. Yeah, the summer, that's right, Massasauga, we were in tents. Um, and then, yeah, last fall we both started our hammock camping journey at the same time. Yep. And I don't think we'll go back to tents unless we are forced to by bringing other people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be in a hammock, um, you know, as long as it's just me sleeping there. I often bring my dog, um, so I'm looking to get a lightweight tent so that it's more comfortable for us because us sleeping in a hammock together does not go well. Um, so that's that's going to be my tent thing, but um, when I'm by myself, it's definitely going to be so much comfier. Oh, yeah. And in the summer, to have the breeze go all the way around you, it's so nice. Not in the winter. No. <laughs> hence, need a good tarp. Hence the tarps. <laughs> so yeah, our gear has just been expanding. We can go into shoulder seasons now. Yep. Um, we both have under quilts, which started this year. Last year we did a uh, trip. What was the date? Yeah. It would have been the weekend after Thanksgiving last year that we went, so mid-October. Yeah, and we did those no underquilts, just our sleeping pads, which we both have the same, it's the Mech Reactor 220. Yeah. Um, so it does insulate pretty good, but it is not a winter sleeping pad. No. Um, so it's good, it's better now that we have uh, underquilts. For sure. Hopefully, we'll see you <laughs> <laughs> As the joys of filming in the back country. Yeah. As I was saying, we'll see by the tomorrow morning how tonight fares with our under quilts. Yeah, I think we'll do fine. I think so too. It's Should a little chilly okay. right now. Like this wind is so cool. Got the double layers of um, puffy jacket, yeah. raincoat, you know. Definitely. But um, I think it'll be much better once we get in our sleeping bags. Both of our sleeping bags are rated much colder than this. Yeah, um, sure. and you know we're sitting stagnant right now. Um, so when we were moving around, we were warmer, yeah. but now we're getting chilly. It's almost time for dinner though, so that should help warm us up. Definitely. We're gonna go the dehydrated backpacker meal oh, yeah. route. We did not bring in anything fresh. We're trying to keep our weights <laughs> down as much as we can. Yeah, I hope we get out another time this season together. Early for the season to end. The water's still open. Snow hasn't fallen yet, but it's close. <laughs> we have had snow on Thanksgiving before, and that's next yeah. weekend, so yeah. hopefully, no snow by then. But Hey guys, so we just finished our dinner and packed up everything, getting ready for bed. So now I'm in my hammock, nice and snug, in my sleeping bag. And I have my raincoat and my puffy like winter jacket in with me and just gonna hang out in here until I fall asleep. It's supposed to rain tonight so 
we'll probably end up waking up to some rain. So we are all packed up now, as you can see. And we're just getting ready to head back out onto the water to go back to the vehicle as the end of our trip, sadly. We don't have too much to paddle this morning, but it's a little bit windier today, so it might take us a little bit longer. Might have some waves. But we have one portage to do today. According to Jeff's maps, we can either do a 651 portage to avoid some rapids, or there is a 225 portage, which is the one we think we're gonna do and then possibly take out where the rapids start. Because 651 compared to 225 is a lot longer. So hopefully today goes well. So we just made it to the portage for Nunakani into Big Hawk Lake. So it's a 200 meter portage to cross by the dam over here. So we're at the other side of the portage now, and it is a gorgeous water view. So now we have a little bit of a paddle. We might have to cross over some rapids a little bit further down, and then we should be back at the vehicle. just got to the little set of rapids that we were talking about so we managed to paddle a fair ways down from where the put-in is after the 225 meter portage so that means that we might only have to maybe 45 meters of portaging from this point rather than continuing from where we put in and doing a 651 meter portage Big 
Hawk Lake access point. So our paddle through Big Hawk Lake was quite windy, a little bit choppy, but this bay here is nice and calm, so it's not bad. But now it's time to pack up and head home. The end of our trip.